Every year, thousands of wildfires across the United States burn millions of acres of forests and grasslands, destroy and damage homes, and threaten lives. Almost nine out of 10 of these wildfires are caused by careless behavior. Most of these unwanted fires could have been avoided by taking a little more care to prevent them. Hi, my name is M. Chad Edwards, and I'm an education specialist with the U.S. Forest Service which stewards 193 million acres of national forests and grasslands throughout the nation. 75 years ago, Smokey Bear became a national icon to remind folks to be responsible when using fire outdoors. Since 1944, Smokey Bear has been the symbol of protection of America's forests and grasslands from unwanted human-caused wildfires. In the spring of 1942, a Japanese submarine surfaced near the coast of Santa Barbara, California, and fired shells that exploded on an oil field very close to the Los Padres National Forest. World War II had started in Europe, and Americans were shocked that the war had come directly to the American mainland. Fear grew that more attacks would bring a disastrous loss of life and destruction of property. There was also fear that bombs exploding in the forests of the Pacific coast could ignite raging wildfires. At the time, most able-bodied men were already serving in the armed forces, and none could be spared to fight forest fires. Protecting the forest became a matter of national importance, and a new idea was born. If people could be urged to be more careful, perhaps some fires could be prevented. To rally Americans to this cause and convince them that it would help win the war, the U.S. Forest Service organized the Cooperative Forest Fire Prevention Program, also known as a CFFP, with the help of the War Advertising Council and the Association of State Foresters. The CFFP and the advertising agency FCB have collaborated for the entirety of Smokey's 75-year history to develop Smokey's wildfire prevention public service campaign. Through development of TV and radio public service announcements, as well as print, out-of-home, and digital creative, the CFFP and FCB's long-standing partnership have brought Smokey's message of wildfire prevention to the American public for 75 years. To rally Americans to support the wildfire prevention cause, the CFFP created posters and slogans educating Americans about the importance of preventing wildfires. In a stroke of luck for the wildfire prevention cause, in 1942, forests and their animal inhabitants were celebrated in Walt Disney's wildly popular motion picture, Bambi. Disney allowed the campaign to use the film's characters on a 1944 poster. The Bambi poster proved the success of using an animal as a fire prevention symbol. However, Disney only loaned the characters to the campaign for one year, so the CFFP knew it needed to find another symbol for wildfire prevention, and nothing seemed more fitting than the majestic, powerful, and also cute bear. On August 9, 1944, the creation of Smokey Bear was authorized by the Forest Service, and the first poster was delivered on October 10th by artist Albert Stahl. The poster showed Smokey pouring a bucket of water on a campfire. Smokey soon became popular and his image began appearing on more materials and the Smokey Bear Public Service campaign was born. By 1952, Congress passed an act which removed Smokey from the public domain and called for his image to be used for the issue of wildfire prevention only. Smokey's original catchphrase was, Smokey says, care will prevent nine out of 10 forest fires. In 1947, it became, remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Then, in 2001, it was again updated to its current version of only you can prevent wildfires in response to a massive outbreak of wildfires in natural areas other than forests. And just clarify that Smokey's promoting the prevention of unwanted and unplanned outdoor fires. The ad campaign to reduce unwanted human-caused wildfires received a boost in spring of 1950. Firefighters battling a blaze in New Mexico received a report of a lone bear cub wandering near the fire line. Dr. Kathy Dobesh has continued in her grandfather's footsteps and is a co-owner of the veterinarian practice in Santa Fe where Smokey was treated. Her uncle Rich Smith also remembers Smokey. My dad mainly and, and then obviously my grandfather, but I think just kind of the fun and excitement that they had uh, caring for Smokey, uh, it's, I know uh, my grandfather talked about when he coming in, the first thing he did is he saw that his paws, his whole ventrum were burned. So the care that he provided was really doing the salve to get, let those burns heal and try to take away some of that tenderness uh, by bandaging them also just really to protect while they were healing. And then doing supportive care, like feeding him. And I uh, understand he started by bottle feeding him 
and then Smokey would just come up and jump on his shoulder when he saw him because he was his, his best friend at that point. It just got to be where they had quite a, a relationship. And we'd always take in some bread and put some honey on it, and he loved that. He just really ate that up, and uh, uh, getting treatment, he would, like I say, he would go up, and, up on his shoulder, and, and he loved it up there. But he really bonded with Smokey, and. I remember he'd always tell the story, and I'm sure he just said it the same way. He said, yeah, we went over, and then once people found out that he was uh, Smokey's veterinarian, they kind of gathered around, and he said, I yelled, hey, Smokey! And he said, I know he knew my voice, because he came over and put his paws up on the, on the cage, and I think that was just a kind of a really special part of his career and something that he cherished and, and being able to tell that story but to just have that connection because sometimes you just get that connection to a patient and I think he really felt that he had that connection and it was because that he cared for him when he needed him most. He knows that that bear always remembered that and I think that was just something he held dear to his heart. News about the little bear spread swiftly throughout New Mexico and the United States. The state game warden wrote to the chief of the Forest Service, offering to present the cub to the Forest Service to be dedicated to the conservation and wildfire prevention publicity program and live at the National Zoo. But the real live Smokey was a bit of a handful as he recovered. Betty Capper's father was with the New Mexico Game and Fish Department, and Smokey lived with them for a few days before going to Washington, D.C. My dad was Homer Pickens, and he was the assistant director of the Game and Fish Department at the time of Smokey. My personal recollections are when they were getting ready to go to D.C., well, they said that Smokey needed to spend some time with my dad because he would be handling him and taking care of him on the trip. We lived out in Tasuki, which is north of Santa Fe, and he came out for about a week and a half. I never liked him. He smelled awful and uh, I guess that's bears smell that way. And I was the youngest child. I have three older brothers, and I was the youngest, and I was the girl, and uh, to be honest with you, I was a spoiled little brat. We had a black Labrador, his name was Sarge, and we have movies of him and in this apple tree, Smokey was in the apple tree, and he would play with our dog, Sarge. They had a really good time together. The cub was soon on his way to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., becoming the living symbol of Smokey Bear. Smokey was extremely popular during his entire stay at the zoo. He was the most popular attraction at the zoo until the pandas arrived in the early 1970s. He received millions and millions of visitors during his 25 years at the zoo, and he received a lot of fan mail, on average about 13,000 pieces of mail a week so much mail that he required three handlers to respond to those letters. Many of the letters were from school children asking him a broad range of questions, but mostly focusing around his appetite, what he liked to eat, how often he played, and what he liked to do when he played. Um, his uniform, of course, they asked about the uniform. His hat was very popular among the kids. He certainly enjoyed enjoyed eating. Uh, his personality, unfortunately, was a little bit more reserved than most people would have wanted. He was, he was pretty shy, preferring to stay in, in the back of his cage and, and away from, from attention, except during feeding times, where he had a daily servings of bluefish, trout, and butterfish, which was his favorite. And he also developed a real affection for peanut butter sandwiches. And one of the letters that we have is from a, a child who requests to watch or be present when Smokey receives his peanut butter sandwiches. So that must have been very popular with, with the, the kids. They were often startled when they came to the zoo. They expected to see a standing upright, fully clothed bear. And when they were led to the cage and found you know, a real living bear, Smokey Bear, they were concerned about him not having a uniform. So much so that the Forest Service became aware of this and built a display case next to his cage that had his full uniform. And from what I've read, it was actually sized appropriate that it would have fit him if they would have tried to, to put it on. 
So I just think that's a really neat little tidbit. Over the years, Smokey's popularity and name recognition have grown. Smokey Bear was highlighted in radio and TV programs in the 1950s through the 1990s and appeared with many celebrities. The Sons of the Pioneers, one of the earliest Western singing groups in the United States, regularly performed on a radio program that featured Smokey Bear and his wildfire prevention message. The Smokey Bear Wildfire Prevention Campaign is the longest running public service advertising campaign in U.S. history, but it has evolved over time to keep it fresh and appealing to new audiences. Now you can check out Smokey Bear on social media. The living symbol of Smokey Bear died in 1976, and he was returned to Capitan, New Mexico, where he is buried at Smokey Bear Historical Park and continues to be a wildfire prevention legend. My name is Benny Long, and I'm the forester supervisor of the Smokey Bear Historical Park in Capitan, New Mexico. What we have here at the park is a 10-minute video that has the history of Smokey Bear and fire ecology. We have a fire prevention, firefighting, fire behavior exhibit hall. We have a two-acre park that um, hosts six of the seven vegetative life zones of New Mexico. The museum was built in 1979 due to the fact that Smokey Bear was found in the Capitan Mountains just northeast of us. Smokey Bear campaign began in 1944 and he was actually a cartoon character for lack of better words, a poster icon. And in 1950 is when the living symbol of Smokey Bear came about when some firefighters found Smokey Bear in the Capitan Mountains during the Capitan Gap Fire and the Los Tablos Gap Fire. A lot of our visitors revisit their childhood with Smokey Bear, and it is a destination for them. I love the faces of the kids when you tell them about Smokey Bear being a real bear. I love the compliments that we get on our gardens. Um, people have come in and said they've been in Washington, D.C., Florida, Albuquerque, and our botanical gardens really compare to those, which is a great compliment to us. When visitors come to the Smokey Bear Historical Park, a lot of the visitors come for one main reason, and that is to see Smokey's burial site. He was brought here after 26 years of being in Washington, D.C., and he was flown back to Albuquerque after passing away of natural causes, and he had a police escort all the way back to Capitan. The legacy of Smokey Bear really needs to go on, and the importance of the legacy of Smokey is to continue to educate our future generations about fire prevention. Just holding him dear to our hearts will help us in our future kids knowing what Smokey Bear's message was, and that was only you can prevent forest fires. It's been a great 75 years, and Smokey's wildfire prevention message is still important today. All right, can't wait to go on this hike. Yeah, it's an awesome day. Look at this beautiful weather. Yeah, it's really nice out today. Yeah. All right, come on, let's get going. See those beautiful birds over there? Look. Yeah, they're really pretty. But, hey, don't, don't worry, Smokey. I've, I've got, got this one. one. Hey, campers, would you mind just come on back here just for a second? Oh, thanks. Now, there's nothing quite like enjoying the great outdoors. Nice warm fire, maybe some gooey s'mores, <laughs> right? Now, with the fire comes a big responsibility. Smokey needs your help to prevent wildfires so more families like yours can enjoy this experience for years to come. Whether it's our forests, our magnificent wild lands, or even your own backyard. Nationally, nearly nine out of 10 wildfires are still caused by humans. And that's why it's important to learn how to be safe with your campfire. We made sure to throw some water on it. And that's a great start, but there's a few more steps we should take to be certain that this fire is out, out, out. Actually, Campfire safety begins even before you're ready to light the fire. First, make sure the campground or other rules don't prohibit fires and that the conditions aren't too dry. Look for any existing fire pits, but if none exists and they are allowed, 
dig one at least 15 feet away from tents, shrubs, trees, and other flammable objects, such as logs, brush, or decaying leaves. Be extra wary of low-hanging branches, and pick a spot where it is protected from wind gusts. You'll want to clear a 10-foot wide diameter around the site. The ideal fire pit will be about a foot deep and circled with rocks. When you're ready to start the fire, first, make sure you have a source of water, a bucket, and a shovel nearby at all times. Before you go anywhere, allow the wood to burn completely to ash if possible. Pour lots of water on the fire. Drown all of the embers, not all just right. the red ones. You may even out. hear a hissing yeah, sound. Sure. If enough water isn't available, stir dirt or sand into the embers with a shovel to bury the fire. Shovels are also handy for scraping the remaining logs and sticks to remove any embers. Move that dirt around and make sure no embers are exposed and still smoldering. Continue pouring water or dirt until the fire is out cold. Just like that, yeah, beautiful. Good job, good job. I'm gonna move these logs around and make sure they get wet. i make sure that it's completely out. Mm -hmm. Now, carefully, with the back of your hand, check the fire. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. Thanks, Smokey. We'll make sure to do our part. Cool. Wait, Smokey. Before you leave, we've got a brush pile in our backyard and we want to burn it. Could you swing by the house later and help us to do it safely? Thank hey. you. I'm with Smokey, so see you in a little bit. You guys should go and enjoy that hike. Yeah? Yeah. All right, see you later. It's not too windy today. I think Smokey would agree that it's a good day to burn this pile. But wait, Mom. I think you're making it too tall. We could cause a wildfire. I think we should wait for Smokey. It's all right. I mean, I think it's fine. Yeah. Go on. Hey, hi. Smoke, what do you think? See, Mom? I told you it was too tall. Yeah, it's important to keep your burn pile small and manageable. Some of the good things are that you're not under any power lines or any overhanging branches. There's no building or anything, no vehicles close. That's all really good. Now, it's important to look around the burn site and make sure that 10 feet are clear in all directions. Right, Smokey? Okay. The area around it, it's good to wet it down so it's at least a little damp. And, and maybe even have a shovel nearby. Smokey's always got one. Thanks, man. Uh, one, one last thing. I, I see that you all have some trash in here, that's a tire and some plastics and household trash and stuff. This is not the best way to get rid of that. It really should be disposed of differently. How about we take care of that and you all work on shrinking this pile down a little bit? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Smoke, you hold that for me? Thanks, buddy. All right, let's get out of here, man. Yeah, we took quite a bit off this pile. It looks a lot better. Yeah, it does. Oh my goodness, this looks nice and manageable. But, you know, all right. That's not the only message Smokey has for us today. There are other considerations to ensure that we don't cause wildfires. Mow and trim the grass in the cool of the day and avoid hitting rocks, which can cause sparks and ignite dry vegetation. When you go camping or boating, Make sure the chains on the trailer aren't dragging, which can also cause sparks and start a wildfire. With more people playing and living in areas near wildlands, the risks and consequences of wildfire are greater than ever. By taking extra care, we can all help to protect our communities and homes from unwanted human-caused wildfires. And remember, only you can, can prevent, prevent wildfires. wildfires. Yeah. All right, I think we're mm. hey, Yeah, all right, okay. Ooh.